Mayong Buntag Church, it's good to spend another Sunday with you here at BCC Sunday Premiere. As we begin, I'd like to encourage those who are watching right now to share this broadcast to your family and friends and let them know that we are about to start our fellowship this morning. online events BCC Sunday Premiere every 9.30 a.m. BCC Kids Church Sundays at 1 p.m. Youth Reload Online Fridays at 8.45 p.m. BCC Yapis Saturdays at 6.30 p.m. BCC Synchronized Prayer Daily at 8 p.m. online events BCC Sunday Premiere every 9.30 a.m. BCC Kids Church Sundays at 1 p.m. Youth Reload Online Fridays at 8.45 p.m. BCC Yapis Saturdays at 6.30 p.m. BCC Synchronized Prayer Daily at 8 p.m. Sa tuwa, overwhelmed with problems, naglaylo, na hinoon. Pag naay problema, dili maglaylo. Pag naay ginagian, mas samot, dapat mo connect. Kaya para mas dahag makaampo, mas dahag mo back up ang prayer, mas dahag practical, practically, dapat yung mga posibleng makatabang sa imuang mga ginatubang. Dili kay pag naay ginagian, mag-withdraw, mag-isolate, dapat dili yung unana. Dili, um, dili mawala ang problema kung muundang ka. Muundang man ka mo pada yun, problems will remain. Circumstances will be there. So. But I, let me tell you this. Disciples of Jesus are designed to become problem solvers because everything has been provided to us by the Lord. Everything has been provided to us for life and godliness as Scripture teaches us. The verse in verse number chapter 11, verse number 21, Lord's hand was with them. Actually, mauni siya ang game changer actually sa tanang kinabuhi, sa mga buhot musulod, o gwalagat sa ginoo. Ang game changer kanang kamot ni Lord. That's another way of saying the presence of God or the anointing of God is upon your life. The hand of the Lord was with them. Dili ang imong kagwapo, dili ang imong kabaayong istorya, dili ang imong physical na picture, madyag ko kag mga bukton. Dili man na mo'y game changer. Dili ang imong diploma, dili ang imong na accomplice in life, dili ang status sa imong bulsa, dili na mo'y game changer. Ang game changer, ang kamot sa Diyos na asay mong inabuhi. You can have everything in this world, but if God's hand is not upon your life, you cannot accomplish anything that is of eternal value. But you cannot have, you may not have anything in this life that the world cherishes and values. But if God's hand is upon your life, you will be able to accomplish something that heaven will clap. Hallelujah.
Amen. Happy Sunday sa tanang pamilya, sa tanang tao nga nagtan-aw karon. Today is the day that the Lord has made for us to rejoice. Git buhat ka ug ako kitang tanan sa Ginoo para maglipay, para magsadya. You know, God created us to be joyful and rejoicing all the time. Wala ta gibuhat sa Ginoo para magguol. Amen. So God is our refuge, a never present help in trouble and he is our strength. Amen. Lord, as we continue this morning, we are here once again as one family, as one community, lifting our prayer requests to you. Lord, today we pray for all the services going on, for our Sunday premiere, and even for all other churches all over the world, Lord God, celebrating this day, Lord, giving you praise, giving you worship, giving you the best of our adoration, Lord. I pray that you will continue to bless each one, that you will touch the heart of every person listening, Lord. That it will not just go into our hearts, what we hear from your word, but we will begin to apply them in our lives, Lord God. That we will be transformed from the inside out. Lord, I pray for all our satellite churches, for all the house churches gathering today as well, and even for the life groups happening every week. Lord, we thank you that the power of your Holy Spirit yes. will continue Amen. to manifest Amen. and be present Amen. in every Amen. gathering that we have so that we will see the people yes. changing in their lives, Lord Amen. God. People's lives are not just changing, but they will be maturing in you, Lord Amen. God. And we will Amen. rapidly be multiplying, Lord God, yes. more leaders for your kingdom Amen. so to partner with you, Lord, in this glorious ministry. So, Father, we just want to give you all the praise, all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we lift up right now the nation of Israel and all its neighboring countries. We thank you, God, for being faithful, for being Amen. good, for being sovereign, for being powerful, that you are the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And so we pray that you move and you continue to move powerfully in this nation and in the neighboring nations, that salvation will reach not just every home, but they will also grow in amen, that amen, amen, walk amen, with Lord, you, in yes. their relationship with you, that amen. you will be more than just a name, but you will be their personal God. Amen. And so we pray for their leaders. We pray for all of the things that they may be facing right now, that you will give wisdom upon them, that you will give them the strength to keep going, that you will empower everyone who does know you to be bold amen. for you and to stand and endure till the end for you. We bless the nation of Israel. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Yes. and among the neighboring countries you see every single person you created Amen. each and every one of us for a purpose and even the other countries around the world God we pray that you unite us as your church as your body that we will Amen. be strong for you we will Amen. be standing on your truth until Ooh. the end that we will be Amen. the light and salt yes, of this Lord. world and Amen. in this generation that needs you thank you God for your goodness and thank you for hearing our prayers in Jesus name Amen we also want to lift up to you, God, the frontliners, Dallas City, and Philippines. I pray for the strength, joy, and peace that comes from you, God, to continue to fill up the lives of the frontliners, God, for their sacrifice and effort every day in the hospitals, taking care of people, God, even affected with COVID, Lord. I pray that the peace that would be filled in them will not be the peace from the world, but, but the peace that comes from you. Yes. Yes. And that you will continue to give them protection, God, not just for them, but even for their families. Yes. And even the people who are in the hospital as well, and their families too. Yes. In all the things that they are doing, God, they are trying their best and doing their best to help the citizens here in the Philippines, God, especially with the ongoing pandemic. I pray for Davos City and the different cities represented here Amen. in the Philippines, Amen. God, that we will continue to reach Bible out for Lord. more people, Waking God, here in the Philippines and even around Amen. the world. Yes. More people will get to know you, God, Amen. including the satellite ministries that people are gathering in, yes. whether online or face-to-face, -face, God, they will be able to continue to grow Speak more who you are as you continue to work in and through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bless the Philippines, God, even the government, and for everyone who is leading this country, God, from yes, um, the government officials, God, to even people in the church, and even ourselves in our yes, own ways amen. to lead and share your word to the people around us. Yeah. May you continue to bless us and continue to show us your goodness and your mercy as we continue to follow you every single day of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Dear Jesus, bless all the children listening yes. today. And help us to be obedient to our parents and follow the 
things you say. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Holy Spirit, we always welcome you to move in our hearts, in our lives, in our families. Have your way. They continue to take over, over us. Thank you for the glorious ministry. Uh, we are excited of, of not just doing, but being. Of, of, of who you are, Lord God, in our lives, Lord God. Amen. Lord, again, salamat sa mga milagro. Indeed, wa pa ka naman sa pagbatog mga milagro. Amen, we speak uh, healing, touch, oh God, to every Amen. families right now, or every people who are in need, Lord God, physically, emotionally, Lord God, yes, mentally, Jesus. Lord God, recovery in the name of Jesus. Yes. Holy Spirit, thank you. We appreciate your presence. We, ad we acknowledge your power. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Pagkagamanan 
ako nagdadai kay ikaw ang akong magbalantay hindi mo ako biyan anak ka And let us now ready our hearts as we also ready our pens and our notebooks and also our gadgets while we take notes as we receive from the ministry of God's Word. Let us all welcome the Senior Pastor of Buhangin Community Church, Pastor Rafi Lagat. Joy 
Mayong adlaw, good day to everyone. Salamat kayo sa kahigayunan nga makapadayon ta sa pag-worship tiha kay Lord. In spirit and in truth, we all know na worship is to be done every day. Uh, through everything that we are doing, everything that we're so saying should be part of our worship. You know, according to Paul in Colossians 3.17, whatever you do in word or in deed, do it all. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to the Father. To Him. So worship is that something that we just do inside the so-called church building. You know, we're in, we have a program that we ought to follow. We start with an opening prayer and in songs and things like those. You know, that's a good thing, but not, that's not the only uh, thing that we call worship. Worship is everything that we do in partnership with the Holy Spirit to please the Father and honor the Son. That's worship. You know? This is a reasonable act of worship, you know, according to Romans 12 verse 1. So, part of our walking with God, very significant part is, uh, you know, the time wherein we receive instructions from the Word. You know, some kind of an apostolic teaching that will not only inform our minds, but will form our hearts and form our life, especially our character. So that uh, in the soonest possible time, uh, God uh, can use our life as His instrument, you know, in uh, in bringing the good news to many other people. Praise God! So, as we study the letter of Paul to the Corinthian believers, the sec especially the second letter, Second Corinthians. No, now we are in the fifth chapter. As we study, we, we are finding out how Paul was really talking to them about the importance of serving the Lord or ministering in behalf of the Lord. So let's proceed with our study today. But before that, let's first pause for a moment of prayer. Father, thank you for today. We bless and honor you, Lord, for today again that we can come before you, worship you in spirit and in truth with our life, with our works, with our lips, O oh Lord. Worship you by receiving ministry from you through your word. Worship you by internalizing the truths and the lessons that you are bringing to us. Worship you, Lord God, through our firm resolve, O Lord, that we will obey, we will apply, we will act on the word that we are learning. Worship you by partnering with your Holy Spirit so that he can use us as his instruments in expanding the kingdom here and there. So thank you for today, O Lord. We bless you for today. In Jesus' name. Amen. So let's go to 2 Corinthians 5, verse number 1. It says here, Now we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Paul is talking here about our body, you know, the earthly tent that we live in. He is referring to, to our physical body. This physical body that, you know, we are living in right now, you know, we are using to connect with the world, to see the beauty of this world, to interact with people, you know, and everything. Uh, this is, uh, you know, set to be destroyed. This, there will be a day and a time wherein this will be destroyed. Death is coming. You know, that is an appointment. So he's referring to that. And yet, at the same time, Paul is telling us, we have a building from God. And this is talking about a heavenly body, not made by human hands or not built by human hands. And this body is a glorified body. Hallelujah. Now, knowing this, because he is talking, he's sharing these truths in the midst of discussing uh, ministry opportunities through the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, our physical bodies can be used by God and yet there is a time limit for the physical body. And because we understand that even if the physical body will come to a point wherein it will 
be destroyed or it will be shed off from us, we're not afraid. We do not worry. Why? Because the Lord has already prepared a building, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Hallelujah. Amen. So while we are right now in this body, we are willing to, you know, make this body of use for the glory of God. We're not afraid to, to tire. We're not afraid to, you know, sometimes we get sick. Sometimes we become so weary, you know, weary to the bones. In doing ministry, some, some of us, when we do ministry, we have to walk, you know, distances, kilometers, up the mountain, down the hill, cruise rivers and valleys, you know, in order to bring the gospel to the out, out places out there. And coming home from such, you know, an engagement, we become tired in our physical body, and yet we are not afraid. Why? We know that we have an eternal house, you know, prepared by the Lord for us. Hallelujah. In the first place, as we remember Romans 12, verse 1, we have already offered this body as a living sacrifice unto the Lord. Remember that? Paul was telling Christians in Rome, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you offer your bodies, you know, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. You know, when we are offering and we are obeying to that body of ours, going up mountain, down the hill, crossing valleys and rivers, you know, reaching out to people, you know, in this body, using this body, it is a spiritual act of worship that gives glory to God. And why are we not afraid of expanding this body? Why are we not afraid, you know, because we know that when this earthly tent will is destroyed, we have by building in heaven. Hallelujah. Not made by human hands. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Paul understands this because later on, he talks about working so hard for the cause of Jesus Christ. Like for example, in chapter 7, 2 Corinthians 7 verse 2, Paul says, For when we came into Macedonia, this body of ours had no rest when we come to Macedonia. Kining among lawas, walay pahulay. Walay pahulay. Diha sa pag-alagad sa ginaw. Grabe ka, ayaw mga kaisunan. So going back sa 2 Corinthians 5, we have a building from God, an eternal house, not built by human hands. Meanwhile, we groan. We groan twice. He uses this line, we groan. Longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling. Because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. We groan because we long while we are living here on earth with all its you know, challenges. And we are living in this earthly body that is made from dust with all its weaknesses and frailties. We groan. And we groan because we want to be clothed. And we will not be found naked. Clothed means we want to be clothed with the strength from heaven, using supposedly that earthly or that divine body that Jesus was, that God the Father has prepared for us. So that our physical body, with all its weaknesses and frailties, will not be exposed, will not, will not become naked. And yet, that is only a groaning that does not come to pass. While we are in this tent, we groan and are burdened in verse 4. While we are in this tent, we groan and are burdened because we do not wish to be enclothed, but to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Hallelujah. This is the personal experience of Paul in doing the ministry. How he wishes, how he wishes that all his physical frailties and weaknesses will all be set aside because he wants to use the body that God has given him in serving the Lord, in fulfilling the purpose of God in his life. And yet, the truth and the reality is, he is still there inside that body that is subject to weakness and even to decay and death. Now, let us proceed to verse number 5. This is a very important verse here in verse number 5. Paul says, Now, it is God who has made us for this very 
purpose. Hallelujah. It is God who has made us for this very purpose. Please understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. God has made you and me for a very clear and important purpose. God has made you for a purpose. You're not an accident. Nothing is an accident here on the earth. Everything that we see all around here is the product of purpose and design. Hallelujah. Especially coming from God. So, you are created by God, made by God for a purpose. Amen. You are not an accident. Regardless of the circumstances of your birth, because some of you, you know, as you, some of you are watching us, listening to me right now, you know, you might not like the circumstances behind, you know, during a time when you were born. But here is a truth, divine truth, that comes from the anointed pen of the Apostle Paul, telling us all, including himself, that God has made us for this very purpose. This is very specific, referring to ministry. God has made us for a ministry purpose, including, you know, the death of Jesus Christ for our salvation and forgiveness of our sins, you know. He did not only die to save us, He died to redeem us back unto God so that God can make use of our life. Hallelujah. That's why this is, there is this declaration. God has made us for a very purpose. Everything that God has created has a purpose. Please understand that. Not only that God, everything that God has created, but everything that's ever created, whether by God or by man, has a purpose. You know, when you see cars running down the streets, all those things were manufactured somewhere. And they manufactured those things for a purpose. You know, the gadgets, like for example, phones, cameras, TV screens, everything that you see all around you were made for a particular purpose. How much more with God, who is the creator of us all and who has the, you know, the grandest of all designs and intentions for everything that he has created. That's why. Paul was saying here, God has made us for this very purpose. When Paul realized this or started to understand this, his life began to change. You know, when he had this encounter with Jesus Christ on the way to Damascus, as record, <coughs> recorded in Acts chapter 9, remember that he was blinded and then later on, three days after, he got back his, his vision, you know, in a way, it was telling Paul his life, you know, that there was a time when he was blinded and now there is this time when he was opened again in his eyes and he began to see clearly. Exactly. In the spiritual sense, you know, when we were in sin, wallowing in sin, we were blinded. Blinded to sin, blinded in selfishness and in, you know, ego, egotistic uh, ventures and engagements, you know, we're all about thinking of ourselves and what will make us happy. But when we came to know Jesus, when the gospel was proclaimed, you know, when with that spirit came and touched our life, we started to realize. We started to see clearly, you see, and our lives began to change and to transform. So, we have to remember that we must know the purpose of ours, one of the most unfortunate things that could ever happen to a person is when he doesn't know his purpose. When you become a Christian and you do not know your purpose, wow, what a tragic thing that happened to your life. You can succeed, but if it's not according to one's purpose, it's considered a failure. What's the use of succeeding in something that is not the purpose of your life? You see? Nilampus ka, pero dili mo na mao ang katuyuan sa Diyos ay mong itabuhi. 
you may rejoice and celebrate in it but the but the but the joy is temporary the contentment is passing never permanent because you have not yet found the very purpose where God has created you hallelujah now you may ask me kuya pastor what shall i do in order to know my purpose simple the next line of the verse will give us a clue <coughs> paul was saying it's God who made us for this very purpose and has given us and has given us the spirit as a deposit. Now what is the role of the spirit in a Christian's life? You go back to John chapter 14, 15 and 16. And when you take a look at those chapters there wherein Jesus spent the last 12 hours of his life discussing with his disciples about the important role of the spirit, you will find out that among other things the spirit is our teacher. The Spirit is our helper. The Spirit is our comforter. The Spirit is our advocate. Let me talk about the Spirit as a helper. Why was He given as a helper? Exactly. Your answer in your mind right now is the same as mine here. The answer is because He will help us fulfill the purpose of God the Father in our life. That's the reason why he is called the helper, helping us to fulfill the purpose of God in our life. The calling or the assignment of the Father. Why he has created us. Remember, he created us for a purpose. And so the Father gave us the Spirit, so the Spirit will help us fulfill the purpose. The Spirit will help us live out the purpose. Hallelujah. Comforter, because in our attempt, to fulfill the purpose, there are times when we suffer setback. And so He will encourage us. He will comfort us. He will assure us. He will pacify our concerns and our worries in the course of doing our assignment. He is our teacher. Moment by moment, He will teach us. He will guide us as we proceed to the direction where the Father has designed for us to go on a beat. He is our advocate, you know, defending and protecting us in advance against all kinds of problems and enemies of our life. That's why the Holy Spirit has been given. Above all, He will empower us. He is called the anointing. Hallelujah. That comes from on high. The unction of heaven. So that He will Empower us and enable us to fulfill that purpose. Without that anointing, we can never accomplish anything that's of eternal worth. But with that anointing, we may be ordinary. You know, we may be very, very limited in our own selves. But with that anointing, with that power of the Spirit given to us, hallelujah, we can accomplish something for the glory of God. In fact, when you look at the history of the church, you will find all the people that God has used were very ordinary people. They were not superhuman people in their own. They were simple folks. Hallelujah. The early disciples, they were fishermen. Most of them were provincial people coming up from the north in Galilee. No education, no training. In Acts chapter 4 verse 13, we read that when the authorities tried to find out who are these people that, that caused a commotion in the city of Jerusalem because they prayed over the man there who was born lame and cannot walk for, the re for, for all his entire life. Suddenly, the man began to jump, walking and leaping, praising God. When they tried to investigate who were these men that did this, they found out they were Peter and John. And they were fisher folks up from Galilee. And they were unlearned, unschooled, and ignorant people. And yet, powerfully, hallelujah, they caused or they created something that attracted the attention of the people around. That's why I'm repeatedly saying that we may be ordinary and simple. But when we relate and connect properly with the Spirit whom the Father has given to us as a deposit, oh my God, hallelujah. Only heaven will tell what things we will be able to accomplish in the power of the Spirit. That's why it's so important to relate to the Spirit. It's so important to go deeper in our intimacy with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has been given 
as a deposit. The word deposit simply means down payment, signifying, signifying that, you know, signifying that one's intention is to be completed sometime in the future. It is a deposit. It is a guarantee, you know, of things that will be coming. In fact, that is the next line in finishing the verse. At the, at the guarantee, you know, a guarantee, the Spirit is a guarantee of our future. Guaranteeing what is to come. Hallelujah. You remember that line because Paul Dice used the same line uh, in, uh, in his first letter. In the second letter, 2 Corinthians. The same, the same book in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 21. It says here, Now it is God uh, who makes us both, who makes both us and you stand firm in Christ. He anointed us, set his seal of ownership on us, and put his spirit in our hearts and, uh, as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Hallelujah. Twice in this letter, Paul mentioned about the important role of the Spirit as a guarantee of what is to come for all of us. And this what is to come has a reference to our ministry, to our service. What is to come concerning our ministry? It's guaranteed by the Spirit. We do not know exactly the chapter, chapter after chapter, the day-by-day -day, uh, uh, result or the day-by-day -day accomplishments. We, we cannot foretell. But what we are sure about is it is guaranteed by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Guaranteed that it will bring glory to God, whatever it may be. It may be small. It may be little in the eyes of men. It may be nothing worth mentioning in the press or in the TV. You know? But as far as God is concerned, it is guaranteed, hallelujah, by the Holy Spirit himself. That's why I am encouraging everyone to Take seriously, seriously this opportunity, once in a lifetime opportunity to be of service to God. Hallelujah. Remember, God made you for a purpose. Those of you who are watching today, listening to me, I want you to realize God has made you for a purpose. Never miss the purpose of God in your life. Every move that God allows to happen, every change, you know, that God allows to happen in your life. Sometimes there is a change of work. Sometimes there is a change of assignment. Sometimes there is a change of place, a geographical change. You know, God approached you from this particular place and then He transferred you so far away. You've never thought in your mind that you will reach this place and yet you find yourself one day in this place. Why do you think God has allowed that to happen in your life? He has a purpose. All you have to know is to do is relate with the Spirit because He is the one that will reveal to you and tell you the wise that's happening in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Do not be tempted to complain. Do not be tempted to murmur when there are things that's happening in your life that you do not understand. Do not complain. Do not murmur. You better pray and just rejoice and just express your, your faith and confidence in God. That's exactly what Paul was talking about in the next verse. Let's proceed to verse number 6. Therefore, we are always confident. This is still talking about a ministry. The ministry that is in this actual physical body which is subject to weakness and human frailties. And yet at the same time, Paul can say we are always confident confident. Hallelujah. Can you say that line with me today? I am always confident. Now repeat it. Huh? I am always confident. How about you stand, you know, in the mirror, in front of a mirror? If you are right now situated near a mirror, you can go to where that mirror is and stand and say, I am confident. And you point to that person that appears in the mirror. I am confident. So many of us, you know, are very, uh, very shy, you know, and very self-conscious. You know, our confidence is of low level. I remember, you know, myself, I was growing up. When I was growing up, my self-esteem is very low. I do not have the guts to speak to people. 
whenever I am with someone, if especially if he's a stranger, my, I cannot speak. My mouth is stuck up somewhere, cannot be opened. And yet we cannot have ministry, we cannot be in partnership with the Holy Spirit if we allow this, you know, limitations to overwhelm us. We have to know the word. What does the word say? Now the word is telling us. God has a purpose in our life. He gave us his Holy Spirit so that the Spirit will, will guarantee our future, our success. Because of that, we can move with confidence. Paul says, therefore, we are always confident. Say that line again with me. Always confident. Now, the confidence is not in ourselves. We should never have confidence in this self. You know, the Bible says the heart of man is a deceitful matter. You know, our confidence is in the Lord. Hallelujah. My confidence is in the Lord. The Lord who created the heavens and the earth. The Lord who sent his son to die in my behalf to guarantee my eternal destiny, my salvation. The Lord who poured out his love blood on the cross as a perfect sacrifice to wash away all my sins. The Lord who reconciled me back unto himself. Hallelujah. Even to the power of his Holy Spirit. The Lord who gave that spirit inside of me so it can legally and technically call God as my Father, Abba Father. He is the Lord. Our confidence is in the Lord. My confidence is in the Lord. Hallelujah. Now as you get this into your system, now you will feel the surge of faith and power inside of you. And your desire to, ministry, to do ministry will increase. Your passion to reach out for souls will increase. Your passion to do consolidation and follow-up will increase. Your passion to do texting and sharing, you know, the links, you know, of our broadcast will increase. As you all know, you know, every Sunday during our broadcast, I am sitting down and watching the same broadcast that you are watching on Sundays. I have a notebook and a pen and I write down the names that I can see down the screen of my phone which I am not familiar. And then after the broadcast, I will send him a greeting. Hi, so-and-so. God bless you. Thank you for joining BCC's online worship today. God bless you more. And when they start replying, I will chat with them, trying to find out where they live, how it happened that they're able to watch the broadcast, etc., etc. And there's so many names, sometimes 50, sometimes close to 100 names. And I will you know, painstakingly write each one of them. Abdan ko gabi eh. But I enjoy what I am doing. Because the Spirit of God is helping me. I cry out to Him. Help me, O Lord. Even with this broadcast, I always remind myself, this is not my work. This is the work of the Holy Spirit in my life. I have nothing to say of my own except what the Spirit will remind me about what to say. I have no message at all of my own. I cannot make an own, my own message. It has to be from the Lord. I have to allow Him to speak whatever He wants to speak. And I believe for the season of our journey with God, the season of our work with God, this is what He wants us to hear. That everyone has a ministry that God has prepared for Him. That God did not only save you, but He wants to use your life. He has made you for a purpose. That the purpose is to serve Him. The purpose is to be instrument by the Spirit so that the Spirit can advance the cause of Jesus Christ is on earth. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Grabe kayo pagkabuutan ni Lord. Therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, meaning to say we're still alive, we're still at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. When we are at home from the body, we are away from the very presence of God. We are away from the fullness of God. That's what Paul was saying. Although God is in us, God is by His presence is with us, but he's talking about the fullness of the Lord. We are away because we are still in this body and the body cannot get close to God. Hallelujah. Then in verse 7, we live by faith and not by sight, this is a very important truth also about 
living our life here on earth, especially doing ministry, we live by faith and not by sight. We do ministry by faith and not by sight. You know, when you do our ministry, when we do our ministry by sight, many times we will be frustrated. Many times we will be discouraged because when we use our physical sight, we see very little result, if at all. People are not responding. They are not repenting. They are not growing. They are just the same. They do not change. When we hear them with our ears or we hear negative things, complaining and murmuring and fighting, etc., etc., that's why it's so important to know and remember that we live by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. Every single one of us as followers of Jesus Christ, we need to learn to live by faith and not by sight. Remember in the previous chapter, in chapter 4 of this verse, of this book, Paul was talking about we set our eyes not on things that are seen, but on things that cannot be seen. Why? Because things that can be seen are temporary, but things that cannot be seen are eternal. There you are. It's the same. So Paul was saying, we live by faith and not by sight. Faith is when you believe that it is there when it is not seen. It is there, but it is not there. It is not yet there, but it is there. There. Wala papirun na ana. Tawag na pagtuo. <laughs> we live by faith and not by sight. Paul was saying we live by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by feeling. Verse 8, we are confident. Hallelujah. I repeat ni Paul what he has just said in verse number 6. We are confident, I say, and would rather prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. Away from the body means death. And at home with the Lord, meaning you become present with the Lord where, wherever He is, in His fullness, in His glory. We are confident and we would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. Paul was saying, if only given a choice, I would prefer to be dead than alive. And yet, because of God's will, I am still alive at home in this body so God can use me. So you can benefit from me being used by God in your life. Now, verse number 9. Very important. I encourage you, remember this. Verse number 9, underline this in your Bible. If you have a physical Bible, a Bible made of paper and print, get that Bible, underline this Bible. Because Paul was sharing his goal in life. After he has come to know Jesus Christ, this is now his goal in real life, in his life. So he said, so we make it our goal to please him. Him is the Lord. We make it our goal to please him, whether we are at home in the body or away from him. At home in the body means alive, away from it, away from it means death. Dead. So he said, whether we are alive or we are dead, our goal is to please him. Hallelujah. And that he, re he releases this declaration or these lines in the context of doing ministry. So when we apply this, the goal of our ministry is to please the Lord. We are not doing ministry to build a name for ourselves. We are not doing ministry to, you know, become famous and popular and people will line up before us waiting for us to you know put our hand on them you know waiting for us to sign their notebooks you know become like an actor or cinema person that's not the goal the goal is not to build huge facilities so we can brag about how God has blessed our ministry that's not the goal the goal is to please him whether things may change physically, we have buildings or no buildings, whether we have titles or no titles, the goal is to please Him. Hallelujah. In one letter, in the other letter of the Apostle Paul, let's, let's connect this with what Paul has spoken or written in uh, Romans. Romans chapter 14. Romans 14 verse number 7 and verse number 8. Paul says, For none of us lives to himself, 
alone. And none of us dies to himself alone. None of us lives to himself alone. None of us dies to himself alone. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Amen. None of us lives for himself alone. That is why the goal is to please him. The, in ministry, the goal is to please him. You know, the goal is to please him. Even when we do ministry like, you know, in our context, you know, we have the so-called system, G12 system, you know. And the goal, you have set a goal. Your goal is to find your 12 before you die. That's your goal. 12 disciples and help them grow, help them become passionate with Jesus, help them to, you know, become a, the persons that God wants them to be. But when you make that goal only because you will be happy when that goal is completed, then you miss the whole point. The point is to please the Lord. <laughs> That's the point. Do not be sidetracked. You know, do, do not be sidetracked with other goals. This is the most important goal. The goal is to please the Lord. Amen? So let's finish this up until verse number 10. So we make it our goal to please the Lord, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Hallelujah. Remember this one, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Jesus Christ. Paul, when you say we, remember he's talking about himself and his team, but he also means all believers throughout the ages. We will all appear before the judgment seat of Jesus Christ. But I want you to understand that the judgment here is not for punishment. The judgment here is for determining rewards of all the believers who serve the Lord. Because when you serve the Lord, when you minister, the Lord has promised He will reward you. Hallelujah. According to your engagement in ministry, according to the depth, the width, the breadth, and the length of your commitment, in serving Jesus. The Lord will not just say thank you to you. He will reward you. You know. In doing ministry. Praise God. He will pay you back. In short. Bayaran ka ni Lord sa imong pag-alagad ka niya. Dili ka thank you ho ni Lord. Bayaran ka niya. Bugtian ka. Balusan ka ni Lord. Hallelujah. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Jesus Christ. Remember that. This is not for punishment. This is not judgment unto punishment. This is judgment to determine reward. Just like when there is a competition and there are judges. Just like when there is a contest of running, for example, in the racetrack. At the end, you know, at the end there is the finish line. There are judges there. That's waiting, determining who is first, who is second, who is third, who is fourth, who is fifth, you know, and they have watches with them that, you know, will tell you how many seconds you run the whole course. That is not punishment. That's determining the reward that you will get in serving. So, please understand that when you serve the Lord, you will serve Him with the best that you have. Because at the end of the day, you will not only please the Lord, but you will also be rewarded by the Lord. Hallelujah. How do you like that? When you, you, you will be rewarded. Of course, you will be excited. You will be excited about the rewards that the Lord has prepared for all those that, uh, that uh, serves Him. Paul was talking about this in his uh, letter to uh, Timothy. In 2 Timothy, look at Paul's uh, declaration in 2 Timothy chapter 4. He says here, in verse number 6, 7, and 8, I am already being poured out like a drink offering. He's talking about his imminent death. The time has come for my departure. 
I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now, there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which is, is one of the rewards that the Lord will give to those who faithfully serve Him. There is for me, uh, there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all. Can you say that word all? To all, including you and me, if you will also prove faithful in the same way as Paul was faithful until his death. Not only to me, but also to all who love and who have longed for his appearing. Referring to the return of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So, just as Paul and the rest of the other apostles will be rewarded, every single believer who has served the Lord will receive the reward on the day that Jesus Christ will appear. That's why when we serve, we do it our best. We do it with the purest of motives. It's never for man's applause. It is for heaven's pleasure. My goal, our goal is to please Him. You know? Hallelujah. Amen. So, ikaw karun ba? Nagtanaw-tanaw ko din na. You who is watching, viewing, listening, do you get an understanding today about all these things? Allow the Lord to speak to you. He wants to use your life. Remember, He's not only intent on saving you. He's not just contented in saving you and getting you ready for heaven. He wants to use your life while you are still alive here on earth. You know, <laughs> Hallelujah. There's a world out here waiting. For them to experience the love of Jesus, waiting for them to partake of the love of the Lord, waiting for them to taste of the goodness of God, and the Lord will use your life. Hallelujah. Amen. One day when you enter the portals of heaven, you will be greeted by noise of people, and they will one by one welcome you and shake your hands. And he gave you a tight embrace, thanking you because you allow God to use your life. You know, and because God used your life, they, these peoples, will come here there in the gates of heaven, have entered heaven because you allowed God to use your life. Amen. So please yield to the Lord. Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Do not be afraid, you know, of some pain, anguish, and agony. There is a eternal building that God has prepared for us all. Paul laid down his life. Many others, the apostles, all of them, died in the faith, obeying the Lord. And in our time and in our day, we want to do the same, to serve the Lord and be used by God in ministry. Hallelujah. This is His purpose. Let me pray for all of you today. Father, thank you. Thank you for your word today, O oh Lord. Thank you for reminding us that even if we lose our body here, hallelujah, we will have a new building made not by human hands, eternal in glory. Salamat, Lord. Meanwhile, thank you for helping us to understand that you made us for a purpose and you gave the Spirit as your deposit in our hearts and in our lives to guarantee us what is to come. We may not know the details of what is to come, but one thing is sure about what is to come, and that is your best, Lord God, will be fulfilled in our lives as we desire to honor you and please you in everything we do. Thank you, dear Lord, for the gift of faith and confidence so that we can always be confident in our service. We will not be hampered nor hindered by insecurity, by doubt, by fear, by shyness, by feelings of guilt and embarrassment. But we will be bold and courageous, advancing and going and obeying to where you want us to be and standing and speaking when there is a need and when there is a call and a prompting from your spirit, O oh Lord. Thank you, dear Father God. Whatever will be the fruit of this ministry, you alone, O oh Lord, will receive all the glory 
and all the praises of Father God. Thank you, dear Lord. Our goal is to please you, O Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for reminding us all the time that the goal is never about ourselves, never about our name being made known, never about us being, you know, adored and idolized by people because of our great accomplishments. Our goal is to please you alone, and you alone will determine that. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your gentle word in each one of our lives. Even now I pray, O Lord, for all your people, even those that are sick and weak in their bodies. Bring healing so that you too can use that body for the glory of your name, O Lord. No one should cry out for healing with no intention of being used by you, O God. We cry out for strength and healing because we understand our body is your temple. Bless us all today, O Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God for His Word for us all today. Indeed, we are in our temporary bodies. No? It's like related to a temporary death. But praise God that after this temporary life here on earth, we have a glorious body and eternal life waiting for us all, for those who believe in God. And we are also reminded that it is God who created us for a very specific and important reason. And it was said earlier by pastor that there is no accident jan kay lord you are not an accident i am not ac an accident we are all not an accident and our main goal is to please and honor god and we can only do that if we partner with the holy spirit like our forefathers before us though no? they were productive and uh, very um, they have a powerful movement during their time because they partner with the holy spirit and it's, it's also a very good to note that it's a very sad for us if we will be successful in a wrong assignment. That's why we, will, we need to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to lead us in every step of our way. No? Because we want to be successful in our lives, in our work, in those who are studying, those who are doing their work, or they're having a business or businesses. And of course, dapat meron ding ministry, kapatid. That's why you are called, we are called to serve God and to serve his people because if we say we love god it is also expected that we will serve him and his people all right so please remember that our father in heaven loves us so much that's why he gave jesus christ to be our savior and lord and he gave the holy spirit to partner with us in this cause so be blessed and have a great day and that wraps up today's ministry and fellowship we pray and believe that you have been blessed by today's BCC Sunday premiere. And if you may know someone who was not able to join our broadcast this morning, you may share this link to them so that they can watch later on. This has been another BCC Sunday premiere. Have a fruitful week ahead.
BCC Online Events. BCC Sunday Premiere every 9.30 a.m. BCC Yapis Saturdays at 6.30 p.m. BCC Synchronized Prayer daily at 8 p.m. Don't forget to follow our social media accounts. On Facebook, Buhangin Community Church, Youth Reload PH, and BCC Yapis. You can also check our Instagram accounts at BCC Davo Official, Youth Reload, and BCC Yapis. You may also follow our Twitter accounts at BCC Davo Official and Youth Reload. You can also listen to our podcast on Spotify at Buhangin Community Church and BCC Yapis. For more concerns, you may call us at 221-5344 and email us at bccvision12 at gmail.com. This has been BCC Sunday Premiere. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this with your friends.